Hey guys, and welcome back to NJ Education YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about GDL or Graduate Diploma in Law and um, what you should know and, and consider if you're uh, contemplating a career in, uh, in as a lawyer. So uh, if you're interested in that, keep watching uh, because this video will be very useful for you. Right guys, so uh, we're here to talk about the GDL. So uh, first of all, what is the GDL? My understanding it's it's like a sandwich degree that you do after an undergraduate in the UK? Yes, yeah, so it is a graduate diploma in law. So what you do is once you have an undergraduate degree, you apply to a GDL and it is a year long course or an academic year. So usually from September to June or January to perhaps around September, October in which you do the core modules of law. So it's, al it's almost between a master's and an undergraduate. I, when I did it, it felt like a fourth year of an undergraduate, just in something quite different. Right, okay. And um, why, um, so I didn't realize that you need to do GDL. You know, I thought that you go and study law as an undergraduate and then become a lawyer. So. Are you now saying that you can do other subjects for your undergraduate and still become a lawyer? Yes, absolutely. And from what I've heard or from what I see, it makes no difference whether or not you do law at undergraduate um, compared to doing something else and then the GDL in terms of how likely it is that you will then become a lawyer. What's great about doing the GDL is that you can go and do something else that you find very interesting and give your, yourself some more time to think about whether you really want to be a lawyer and then go and do the GDL. The only downside, perhaps, to doing a GDL instead of doing law at undergraduate, if you know that you're really interested in law from a very young age, is that during law degree, because it's three years long, you do a lot of non-core subjects. So you might have the choice to do, for example, family law or international law. On the GDL, there isn't quite the space for that because it is only one mm. year. So you, do, so you don't have the options to do optional subjects. And, and if you do law undergraduate, do you still need to do the GDL as well or do you skip that? No, so you skip that and you go straight into the vocational training element of becoming a lawyer. Got it. So you basically save a year. You, you save can... a year. So it is also short, uh, quicker to become a lawyer, which is another plus side to not doing the GDL. Okay. And um, the, the GDL, so it's a one year. And, and I'm guessing at this point, everyone is you know, a bit more mature, older, so kind of people generally more focused and, uh, and, and sort of it's a more like intense learning than, than doing yeah, the standard. Yeah, I think that, absolutely. Um, I think the thing is with the GDL is that everyone wants to be there. It's not a sort of undergraduate degree that you feel like you should do. Everyone's by then made a choice that they want to do law as an adult. So as you say, it is quite, quite a bit more focused. You're only doing the the core modules but that's still about seven modules in a year so it is quite a lot of work so it can be intense and pretty full-on okay okay makes sense and um how how would one go about um applying for gdl so is it is, is it a ucas application like with uk undergraduate or common app like with us undergrad i mean how do you how do you do that so when i applied that I think there was a central application system and it was a personal statement that went to different universities. Uh, of course, Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, they don't offer the GDLs. So you will be looking at different universities, some like the University of Law or BPP mostly do that. There's also City Law School, which is part of City University. Um, I think there's Ox Oxford Brooks, I think, offer a GDL. And then you go through just a personal statement and they give you a place based on that. So it is quite similar to undergraduate. Plus, I'm guessing grades and the reference. Grades and the reference, as you yeah. say. And you can, the difference to undergraduate is that you can ap apply quite a bit later. So I applied, I think it was in August or late July oh, wow. to start in September. Uh, which gives you some more time. Although, of course, the earlier you apply, the more chance you have of getting the, it. The more chance you have. Okay. And, um, you know, how do you pick a GDO? Uh, because there, there, there aren't that many very well-known brands, you know, like you have Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, you know, Queen Mary, etc. cetera, you, you know, lots of rankings. But for GDL, they're not as well-known. So sort of how do you go 
about it, and, and, and I'm guessing also prestige of the university doesn't matter as much because it's the strength of the faculty that matters more here? Well, you're right that the prestige of the university do doesn't matter as much. Often people will be considering the price if they're self-funding. That can be quite an important factor, whereas obviously that's different to undergraduate uh, or perhaps even masters where the prices are, are, are maybe more similar. Um, so there'll be the price, there'll be location as well. Maybe you want to live at home, maybe you don't, but that factors into it quite a bit. Finally, I would really recommend looking at the career service and particularly have in mind whether you'd rather be a solicitor or a barrister. Some universities will have an amazing career service for people who want to be barristers and perhaps focus a bit less on solicitors and vice versa. So that's definitely something worth bearing in mind because if you're doing the GDL, you know you want to be a lawyer. Yeah. So you should really bear that in mind. And by the way, guys, we've got a separate video describing the difference between barristers and solicitors and, and those two career paths. Uh, uh, the video link should be on your screen now, so do check it out. Uh, we filmed it some time, um, some time ago. Um, all right, and um, in terms of the actual GDL, so it, um, is, it, is it 12 months or how, you know, how long it, ten, it takes and sort of how intense it is? What's the typical workload? So it's an academic year. It's from about September to around May, June, it slightly depends on the provider and your holidays. And what happens is you'll have your, your core modules, which you have to do. Uh, that'll be tort law, which is like negligence, contract law, land law, equity and trusts, public law, which is close to constitutional law, and criminal law, mm -hmm. and finally, land law. Okay. So those seven in one year. Um, and the way, the way that the course works, again, slightly depends on the provider, but usually you'll be writing essays for your tutorials in each of those, or at least planning essays for your tutorials, thinking through problem questions and law, which is quite different to other humanities, and getting to grips with what the law is and where those difficulties are, where the lack of clarity is in each of those subjects. Interesting. Um, no, that's uh, that. That's not interesting. And, and how? Um, because as, especially with students who did not study law beforehand, and I'm guessing GDL is designed for students who are transitioning into law. Do you need to provide justification? So let's say you did chemistry for your undergrad, or music, or politics. You know, do you justify that I want to do this because, or do they accept that? You know, you just changed your mind and decided to switch into this. So in a personal statement, it is always useful to be able to show some interest in the law. But it, that, that's something that's quite easy to do. You can walk into any court, well, any court that doesn't have vulnerable children. Stuff, but most court proceedings in the UK are public. You can email just to ask to watch a video link for uh, uh, high court proceedings. You can go into magistrates courts, which are where criminal proceedings happen. So it's very easy and free, in fact, to be able to show an interest in the law. Some law firms and barristers chambers offer open days for young people who haven't yet done the GDL and sessions where they explain what's going on or what they're about. And that's a really good way of being able to show that you're interested in some way, even if you're, even if they know that for the GDL, you don't have to have done the law. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So there are actually quite a number of ways that you can demonstrate that interest yeah. um, without having studied that. Yeah. Great. Great. And um, just briefly, after the GDL, so it's a one year, and then do you become a solicitor barrister right away, or how long does it take? No, so then you go into your vocational training. If you want to be a barrister, you do the bar course, which is another year. And if you want to be a solicitor, you used to have to do the LPC, the law practice course. Now I think you do the SQE, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is another two years. But... It, it does the, take a, yeah. yeah, it does take some more time. Got it. Great. Well, listen, all the all the best to you in your uh, your career, and guys, uh, uh, I hope um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, this video. If you if you did, please like the video and do subscribe to our channel. We we'll spend a ton of effort into making these videos um, as accessible and as useful uh, uh, to you. Uh, but for now, all the best with your applications and good luck.